Skin cancer. Uh, unlike beauty, it may not only be skin deep. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I'm Dan Waltho. Dan Waltho is a plastic surgeon who has been kind enough to join us today and educate us about skin cancer. Okay, so, let's start at the beginning. What is skin? What is the purpose of our skin? Paul, why don't you start us I off? think skin might be uh, the largest organ in our body or True. on our body. Fun right? fact. It does protect things from coming in our body and going out of our body. However, it is susceptible to disease um, and skin cancer is one of the most common uh, dangerous diseases that can happen to skin. So, what is skin cancer? Well, uh, I'm, I'm learning so much already. <laughs> Um, skin cancer is essentially a broad term for any cancer that arises from the various cells that make up the skin. There's three of the most common types of skin cancer you'll hear, hear about. There's basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. And as we all know, the most common cause of skin cancers is from UV radiation, uh, commonly for sourced from the sun. All right, let me give shed some light on Light. Shed some. <laughs> Let me just talk about light for a minute here, okay? We mentioned UV radiation, which means ultraviolet light, which means light in the spectrum that is a higher frequency than the color violet. Uh, so uh, higher frequency means lower wavelength, and we have a visible spectrum of light. I think it's somewhere between four and seven hundred nanometers. Then when you go smaller than that or higher frequency, smaller wavelength, you get to ultraviolet light, which is 400 nanometers or smaller and then you've heard of UVA light which is about 320 or something to 400 and then UVB which is just a little bit smaller wavelength go beyond that you get x-rays we know that's right we go beyond that that's gamma rays go on the other side that's infrared wow. you thank you for heat. watching Paul's TED talk <laughs> higher than that you got it's a way like spectrum. but more importantly yeah, about, that's skin, light. about skin cancer is that in our skin or any cell that is rapidly reproducing throughout our entire lives so not just when you're growing and skin being one of these is that our bodies make a lot of mistakes genetic mistakes as they reproduce and our bodies have the capacity to deal with most of these mistakes but UV radiation increases the chances that one of these mistakes gets propagated and then chooses or selects itself to become a cancer that reproduces and then that's why cancers grow so this is why cancer is even a thing so Dan when we have someone that has skin cancer or someone who's worried about skin cancer how do they present like how does someone know or how do we how do we look for skin cancer so that's a good question so one of the most common uh, concerns is a concerning mole so something okay. that you may already have had you might have had all your life um, but it might change or appear in a certain way uh, and we talk about a b c d e which i'm sure you've seen on your family sesame doctor's office every sesame single street. time and certainly <laughs> sesame street has represented that um, and that stands for a which is asymmetry borders which are jagged or irregular colors specifically more than one color in the mole and then diameter greater than six millimeters finally evolution so is it changing in size character or shape i even read they added f to some of the guidelines saying that if it's funny looking like if you have a whole bunch of moles and one looks a little weird compared to the other one that ugly duckling kind of thing maybe that's exactly funny like hey this looks like abraham lincoln kind I, of guess, funny. I guess i guess all right well that's a great thing you guys can try at home a b c d e Possibly, possibly F, F. Uh, to check out your own moles to see if they are concerning. Okay, so you've got a mole or a lesion on your skin you think is concerning. You go see your doctor. What happens? So if uh, the, your uh, family physician is able to, they might do one of two investigations to further look at it. There's something called dermoscopy or dermatoscopy. Uh, usually it's the dermatologist doing that and they essentially get a magnified image of that mole or other lesion and they can actually determine a lot from that that might prompt further investigation. Like they take a picture or they're looking through a device? So both. It okay. used to be a device that was just analog ma magnification. Now they have quite a bit of technology to really blow up that uh, the image and they can see a lot of detail from there. Question, is the physician the one looking at it or do they have a program that assesses it? So is it me looking at it saying, hey, this looks odd, we're gonna do further testing or is there a like program? A, an app? Yeah, an app or maybe some artificial intelligence? Yeah, I think that there's certainly a lot of technology already but a lot on the way okay. as far as that. Not only for independent lesions but as some people might have experienced taking full body shots and having regular interval reassessments of okay. those images to see if anything's changed or anything new has uh, shown up. Okay. okay, so you've taken a picture, your doctor sees something that they're worried about, 
What's the next step? So this is a traditional investigation, but still the most important, and that's a biopsy. Okay. So that's taking or excising either part or the entire skin lesion, and they send it to the lab. The pathologist will look at it, and they'll determine either is it a, a malignant or benign, is it a cancer or is it not? Okay. And even further, is there any sort of atypical growth or cells present in there, which is called dysplasia, and that might still prompt some preventative measures. To it's almost like a precancerous. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And that's kind of the gold standard really to determine whether or not a lesion is a cancer yeah. or not. That's to have it removed or a part of it removed and someone look at it under the microscope, a pathologist, and then make that determination and give you the results back to let you know, yes, this is a cancer or a precancer or no, this is a benign lesion. And now whether you take a piece as a sample to get tested or you take the whole thing out to not only test it but also potentially cure it, how is that a dealer's choice kind of decision? Yeah, I think it depends on a few things. It depends on how cosmetically sensitive the area is or functionally okay. sensitive. So if you, for example, have a spot that's really close to an eyelid, you might want to be more conservative. Okay. There's a chance that you don't need to do a wide excision. Um, and it also just depends on the, the size of the skin cancer. So I've seen skin cancers that uh, are very small in, in the, the magnitude of millimeters or several centimeters. And so that okay. might depend uh, on how you manage it as well. Okay. Okay. So you've gone to your uh, dermatologist or your plastic surgeon or you've had a biopsy done and the results come back and they're benign, fine, thanks, see you later. We'll follow this up again in a year or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say you're unfortunate in the sense that it comes back and the biopsy is positive. It says, yes, this is a cancer or this is a pre-malignancy. Um, what's the next step? So the next step is to see either a dermatologist or someone like me, a plastic surgeon. Um, there are many different ways to treat skin cancers and some are more appropriate than others depending on the type of skin cancer. Uh, but one of the most common ways to treat these and certainly one of the most effective is to do what's called a wide excision. Okay. Where you're taking the skin cancer out and you're getting a good margin around it in terms of the peripheral margin as well as the depth. And that uh, usually involves see seeing a surgeon. Okay, so then you've had this uh, wide excision are you done or does that go to the lab to make sure the margins are clear or anything like that? What's the process there? Exactly. Uh, we'll send that to the lab and they'll look at the entire margin and they'll give us an indication. Is it uh, clear of any skin cancer or not? And they'll also determine if there's anything further. Sometimes a superficial skin cancer uh, that we see on biopsy turns out to be quite a bit deeper uh, okay. than we first thought. And I think that's a great point. I think people probably assume, or some people would assume, that it's really just beside the lesion that you're worried about, but it actually can be below. So mm -hmm. if you took a really shallow excision, theoretically, you could leave some cancer cells deep. So that's why you're checking margins on all three dimensions. And so yeah. is that where the term in situ comes into play? I've seen yeah. that term thrown around a lot. Exactly. In situ, it's a Latin term. I think it means on site or in place and um, that's usually a good uh, term or something I like to share with the patient because a lot of people for example get a melanoma diagnosis and that becomes a real serious thing for them and it is but in situ melanoma is quite a bit different in that it only exists sort of on the very top surface of the layer we say uh, of skin rather uh, we say it hasn't gone down past the basement membrane and that really changes the prognosis of the skin cancer but also the management quite a bit. Okay. Incite you. That's often what I'm trying to do to Brad during these videos. <laughs> okay, so that's a good thing. If it, I mean, it's unfortunate that you have been diagnosed with a skin cancer, but if it is an incite you lesion, that's a good thing because it's still within uh, the skin. Yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about next next steps. So say, so if you don't, if this is a lesion that's totally benign, no cancer, probably no follow up. I'm assuming. If you do have a positive diagnosis of skin cancer, but the margins are clear, mm -hmm. then what do we do? So there's two groups, obviously the clear margins or the possible spread of the cancer like other types of cancer. So say localized, yeah. we got it all, now what? Well, it's important to still have surveillance okay. after. So I always recommend the patients who have had any um, skin cancer diagnosis, even one, uh, to always see their dermatologist in about one year and every year thereafter to look for any signs of any new or recurrent skin cancers. Um, it's a, a great way to prevent a skin cancer from, from becoming a, a worse problem or from, from becoming larger and requiring more surgery. Um, and in addition to that, 
there's all the same things, diligent sunscreen, sun protection, and your own personal surveillance of your skin. And once you've had skin cancer, you're at higher risk of getting another skin cancer, correct? Exactly. It's an independent risk factor, okay. um, and uh, there are certainly many others. Okay. Okay. So we talked about the case where it's been in situ, it's been excised, and you're going for surveillance. Now, what people might be wondering is, can you die from skin cancer? So unfortunately you can. There are certain skin cancers that, be, that can be or can develop into a, um, a fatal skin cancer, um, especially melanoma. Everyone talks about that. It has a uh, propensity to spread to other uh, organs and lymph nodes and from there can become a real uh, difficult problem to deal with. Where does melanoma spread to typically? So most common areas are first and foremost your lymph nodes, which is your sort of uh, a type of vessel that uh, provides your lymph uh, fluid to other tissues and organs. Um, that's the most common, but as far as organs, well, there's bone and brain as being some of the most common. And it can also even spread to, to other organs, such as your, the organs in your gastrointestinal system. Um, it can spread to other areas of the skin as well. Okay. Okay, and that's why this is such an important topic, because it can be fatal. Early diagnosis, early treatment, I think, is key to preventing uh, that spread. Um, that's the skinny on skin cancer. That is the skin knee. Yeah. See what you did there. I think what we should do is another video on prevention and uh, that kind of stuff. I think that's a great idea. But now you have an approach. If you have a, something on your skin that you're worried about that has been behaving abnormally, definitely talk to your family doctor, your healthcare practitioner to get it looked at, at least give you some peace of mind. And if it's worrisome, they can do the appropriate investigations. Get that mole checked out. Okay, so if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. Dr. Walpo, thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, you are in charge of your own health and your own skin. We'll see you next time.